Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and we're back with the last of the, well, last for the near future DDR4-Z690 uh, overclocking video, still the same G-Skill kit as all the previous videos, still the same 12900K, still the same air cooler, um, and also exactly the same settings that I was running on the Z690 Tough, because it turns out if your memory controller sucks, the motherboards you use it on doesn't matter. <laughs> um... Yeah, like, admittedly, I've not been able to boot the same memory speeds that I've been able to boot on the Tough, but on the Tough at 4,000 megabits per second, the CPU is so incredibly unstable that you're lucky to get into Windows. Whereas here, it just won't post. So that's not really, like, I guess if you're into taking screenshots of your extremely unstable memory overclocks, that's cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, neither, neither board has been, like, none of the boards have been able to run 4,000 megabits per second stable for me. Um, and so, instead, I'm, con like, with all of them, I'm stuck at, like, 3900 CL14, which you can see here. Um, there's the tertiary timings, which standard BDI tertiary timings, though I do tend to run my write-to-reads a bit looser than most people do, but, yeah, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Like, the... That would technically be, like, absolute minimum settings, but I'm lazy, so I usually run 28, 24. Um, anyway, WR is set through the WR Pre and uh, WR uh, PDEN uh, timings down here, so that's why I don't have it set up, like, here. I'm not sure if that's actually necessary on this BIOS version. It's just, like, after the Gigabyte board, I've just kind of started doing that because, eh. Don't have to worry about that because the funny thing is these these uh, the w TWR is not actually a register on Intel CPUs. Like the when you set the TWR timing, the motherboard BIOS calculates what your WR pre is supposed to be, and and the like this one down here. Like it uses that it takes TWR and calculates what these two values are supposed to be. So you could just set those instead, in my opinion, because um, you can li like you literally just lower them like their TWR. It's just there's a bigger, like, the number's bigger. Anyway, RD pre at 8, so that's to set the RTP. Um, and that's the same deal. I'd have to make, like, I'd have to check the Intel documentation, but I'm 99% certain that RTP is also not an actual uh, register on Intel CPUs, which is kind of funny how there's, like, a bunch of memory settings that you get in a lot of um, motherboard BIOSes that don't actually exist. Um... Like, they, like, it's kind of, well, actually, well, we sort of had this on, um, what was it, Z, well, the previous Z, Z chipsets, you'd have a lot of motherboards that would have, like, a TRCD and a TRP setting, but they didn't work, and the thing is, there wasn't a TRP register, that didn't exist. Now, we have a TRP register, but most of the BIOSes, with the exception of Asus, don't actually allow you to change the TRP, so if, like, I punch in 13 right now, um, and we're just gonna save and reset, and that takes a while on this board, um, yeah, on this BIOS ver like, this BIOS version has some weird, like, boot up, like, boot management issues. It takes forever to restart. Um, it doesn't seem to shut down very well. I've heard people complaining about it waking up from sleep, but I don't use sleep mode, so, uh, yeah, that's not really something I'm too worried about. And it really should boot. And it does. The benefits of having a postcode is you don't have to wonder if the board is booting. You can actually see that the board is booting. <laughs> this does have troubleshooting LEDs and they are color coded, but um, I'd still prefer a postcode. Anyway, so yeah. You can set your TRP to 13, but because of the whole thing with past Intel CPUs not actually having a TRP register, a lot of the Z690 BIOSes don't respect the fact that the TRP register is now a thing. And so they just kind of treat it the, like the old way where it was TRCD equals, like TRP and TRCD are the same same thing because they were both set with the same register. So um, yeah, like this, this doesn't actually change the TRP timing here, which eventually I hope, like MSI will hopefully fix that eventually, because yeah, there is a TRP register now. Um, would be nice if we could actually get use of it on anything other than Asus motherboards. I don't know if ASRock has it enabled. Um, I've not tested any ASRock boards, but 
Anyway, so yeah, standard VDI timings for the rest of this. Um, you don't have to set the RTLs on this board. I've never seen it miss train. Um, where is it? Where is it? Yeah. Oh, actually, it kind of missed. So these are supposed, like, ideally, they should all be 69 instead of 69. Like, that 71 over there is kind of a miss. But it's not as bad as what the Gigabyte board was doing, where it would sometimes go to, like, 81 or something. So this is fine. <laughs> this is this is like this is not necessarily like this shouldn't cause stability issues if it misses by like just two ticks. If it misses by ten, then it won't necessarily give you instability, but it will crater performance. So yeah. Anyway, then we get to the ODT settings, and this is the one thing you have to do on this BIOS. I'm not sure if there's like a like the the thing with the dash A from MSI is there's like a bunch of beta BIOS versions floating around for this board. And uh, they're not on MSI's website. Um, so I don't really count them as like, hey, if you dig up this beta BIOS from some forum, your motherboard will clock memory correctly is kind of like, that doesn't really count, okay? Like if you can't download it from the manufacturer's website, even though I like those BIOSes do come from the manufacturers, like if it's not on their website, it is not reasonable to expect people to use those BIOSes. Right? Like, you shouldn't have to dig through random forums to get BIOS updates. That's that's insanity. So, anyway. Um, yeah, but on this BIOS version, which is the... Like, this is a public BIOS, the .100. Uh, the only thing you have to do is set your terminations. Um, I'm not sure... Like, this works for me. I'm not sure that these are optimal for all configurations. Um, but yeah, 60, 48, 80 works really well for me. Um, these are obviously very different terminations from what I was using on the Gigabyte board, and that makes sense. Different boards, different memory topology, different termination requirements. Like, yeah, it's not really that surprising. That's how that's supposed to work. That's why these are configurable. Um, they're also configurable because different memory chips might require different termination settings, but of course this is Samsung BDI, so... Actually, I mean, the settings are still different because different boards, but... Anyway... So yeah, you have to set the terminations manually, and after that, you don't really have to do anything. The board doesn't have any weird voltage issues. It boots at 1.6 volts, 1.65 volts, just fine uh, for the memory voltage. Uh, I have the system agent up at 1.3 volts, VDDQ at 1.5. Um, I've kind of just decided that I'm going to treat VDDQ kind of like an extension of the, the DRAM voltage. I am not 100% certain that that's... Um, safe but on the the thing is on the asus boards like the vddq voltage never turns red um so i'm not sure if they haven't decided what they consider a safe range yet or if it's just kind of like you should you shouldn't really be able to harm the cpu with vddq uh, unfortunately there's really not much detail on what exactly this voltage does but uh i kind of have a like i wouldn't I don't think, like, I wouldn't consider it equivalent to the old I.O. voltage, because the I.O. voltage, like, it would roll over really hard. Like, you could very easily set the I.O. voltage too high, and it was very obvious, because you would start losing stability. Um, so, and I've not run run into that with VDDQ yet. Anyway, um, for core voltage, I'm at 1.22 volts, because we're on the air cooler, um, and then lots of V-droop, because we're on the air cooler. Um... Also, I don't know how good the voltage regulation is on this motherboard, but I'll probably hook up the oscilloscope to it um, eventually. Anyway, and then 4.8 and 4.6 on the CPU. And then, of course, we're in gear one. Uh, and then because we're on the 3900 megabits per second memory uh, ratio, uh, you know, we're on the 100 to 100 reference clock for the memory. So anyway... Um, let's go into Windows, and I'll show you the results of the stability testing and, like, performance. I have screenshots of that. Um, yeah, there was an earlier take of this video that didn't work out very well. So, that's why we're doing it this way. And the board is taking forever to restart again. <laughs> I'm not entirely certain that I'll be testing any of the new... Well, I think I might give the one of... Because I recently got my hands on another beta BIOS for this board, so I'll maybe give that a little bit of a try to see if it... Because the one thing that this board hasn't been able to do for me is boot 4,000 megabits per second in dual rank um, without, like, jumping through a bunch of hoops. It is worth noting, however, that... Um, and the capture card has decided that it's going to be extremely cooperative today, so let me just deal with that. Um... Why did, there we go. So, anyway, 
Um, yeah, if we pull up Azrock Timing Configurator, yeah, so that that right there is not not ideal, but other than that, it's fine. And I'm just going to pull up a screenshot of the stability tests because uh, I guess you could also just lock your RTLs in if you're having issues with them floating around a bunch, um, reboot to reboot. So, uh, oh man, I hate this app. <laughs> Like, my personal system uses a different... I have a different image viewing thing, and the scroll actually, like, zooms in on that one. So anyway, uh, yeah, IDA performance is roughly what, you know, like, similar to what I was getting on the Tuf. Almost like I'm running the same settings as the Tuf. Uh, Linpack passed, that's 33 loops. I'm actually getting slightly more performance in Linpack than what I was getting on the Tuf board, but I think that's because as I've been, you know, going from board to board to board... Uh, with the same memory kit and the same CPU, I've been getting slightly more aggressive with the settings each time because it's like, well, last time this passed memtest, so what if we try one better? Um, so it's been sort of creeping upwards because I've been slowly get making the settings a bit better. But yeah, here you can see that previously it was at 69.69 on the RTLs, so maybe locking those in wouldn't be too too bad of an idea, but... It's not necessary like with the Gigabyte board. With the Gigabyte board, if you don't lock them, it would randomly just not post a lot of the time so yeah anyway um yeah mem test passed 400 percent there's a fan on the memory sticks of course at 1.6 volts that's pretty much a requirement uh and then y cruncher ran just fine and it ran like i ran white y cruncher multiple times um but the board doesn't have avx 512 support so of course it didn't run very quickly uh compared to the tough the tough gets better y cruncher times because it uh has AVX 512 support, but um, yeah, I mean, I'll just run a Y cruncher right now because, like, the the thing with for me is a stable memory overclock, or really a stable overclock in general, is that you can run any application without the fear of like, oh, this is gonna crash now. So, <laughs> so I'm confident this is gonna pass because it like. It passed before. It passed multiple times. Admittedly with slightly different RTLs, but I really don't think going from 6969 to 6971 is going to make much of a difference. Um, actually, it might slow Y Cruncher down a bit. Very slightly. Um, but it shouldn't affect the stability. So, yeah. So with the, the Dash A, it is a bit more work to get this to the same settings as the Tough, right? Like, you can't just... Like, on the Tough, you don't need to set your ODTs, right? Like, that's the biggest difference, is on the Tough, the... I think Asus just has the ODTs configured correctly out of the box for you. Whereas with the MSI board, if you don't set the ODTs, it gets stuck at 3600, which is the same behavior that you see on the Gigabyte board. If you don't set the ODTs, you get stuck at 3600. Um, which, that's a really funny thing about... Like, I suspect the Intel, uh, the way the Intel memory controller is configured by default is it works just fine up to 3600. Because that has been, in my experience, a, like, typical brick wall with Intel CPUs. Oh, it's actually a bit faster. I guess I don't have so much crap running this time around. So, it's sped up a bit. But, um, uh, yeah, the thing is, um... With Intel CPUs just in general, it's always really easy to get up to like 3600 and then past that you start either like either the motherboard has to have the BIOS dialed in or you need to start setting stuff up manually. Um, things like the ODTs, in the case of the Gigabyte board, the RTLs, and then also like the training voltage. And like, luckily this board, like it trains fine at high memory voltages for me. Once you set the RT, uh, once you set the ODTs correctly, I don't know if it would work without the ODTs set correctly, but... Um, yeah, um, like, this is, it's not, it isn't as easy as the tough, but it, it isn't anywhere near as obnoxious as the Gigabyte board to set up, right? Like, the Gigabyte board really requires that safe boot button. This, on the other hand, it recovers fine for me on the 100 BIOS. Like, as long as you don't, like, yeah, it recovers fine. It takes a while, but it does recover, and, um... Yeah, I've not really had any, like, massive issues with it. I don't think I've had to clear the CMOS at all. Yeah, I don't think I've had to clear the CMOS at all, because I don't think I've saved a single profile. <laughs> so the fact that I got anywhere is a pretty good sign. Um, 
So, yeah, but the one thing is, like, you do need to set the ODTs. Without the ODTs, it just brick walls at 3600. And then, of course, there's all the different beta BIOSes floating around for this board, but... Uh, well, 116, I will st straight up say this, the 116 BIOS, if you find that somewhere, is terrible. Don't use it. I've tried it, it, like, horrible, horrible BIOS. I get stuck at 3800 on that one. Um, unless you start fiddling with BCLK, and even that is, like, super unreliable. I had that BIOS boot, like, 3993 once, and then never again. And that that's when I decided to ditch it and go back to 100. Oh, why Cruncher just keeps speeding up at this point, so that's fun. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that's the, oh, I guess I should have pulled up the SPD for the memory kit, if anybody cares. Um, no, SPD. So yeah, there you can see the part number if you want to, to get the, the same memory, and I should mention the memory is provided by G-Skill. Um, I bought the motherboard, um... Mostly because I didn't want to deal with the review sampling process for MSI. So I hope the patrons aren't annoyed by that. Because I guess, like, technically I could have probably made a request for one. But I like the thing is, I'm not sure they have allocation of these. Like, I'm pretty sure they would have wanted to send me a Carbon or something. And it's like, I don't want to test a Carbon. It's just an overpriced version of the Dash A. Anyway. Um, yeah. So that's it for the video. Um... Set your, like, if you've got this board and you're struggling to go past 3600, set your ODTs. Though, if you're on single rank memory, um, you don't actually have to set the ODTs. On single rank memory, this board works great. Um, very easily goes up to fourth. For me, actually, this is the only board that will, at, like, boot 4100 without any effort on single rank. It's still incredibly unstable, though. Um, it's kind of the... It's kind of like the, the like reverse tough. On the tough, I can't boot 4100 single rank. I can boot 4000 dual rank, but it's incredibly unstable. On this, I can boot 4100 single rank, but it's incredibly unstable, and I can't boot 4000 dual rank. So anyway, there. Um, so ultimately, I really do consider all of the boards that I... Like, with the exception of the Gigabyte, because the Gigabyte is just, like, not finished. <laughs> Uh, though, again, I haven't tested the most recent BIOS updates for that board, and Gigabyte has been, like, putting out a bunch of them. It's too much testing, not enough me to do all of it. Anyway, um, well, the worst part, like, the thing I get hung, like, stuck up, stuck on is always shooting the videos, but anyway, um, there, that's it for the video. I'll actually end it now, so thanks for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. There's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, uh, hoodies, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. Uh, both Patreon and Teespring help out immensely with running the channel, so it would be much appreciated if you'd check them out. And that's it for the video, so thank you for watching, and goodbye!